Before we ever started RVing, we thought that the dirtiest job we were going to have to tackle <laughs> was this right here, the sewer. Turns out it's not. That's not bad at all. There are some much dirtier jobs. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Oh! oh, oh. <clears throat> That's offensive. That's foul. Oh, gross. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that's really gross. I mean, when you put a spotlight on it like that. <laughs> <It's bad. laughs> While this job does have the potential to get a little bit dirty when you're connecting and disconnecting the hoses, that's really the only part when you first set it up and take it down. Yeah, because the actual dumping and flushing part is just pulling a few handles in here. Yeah, it's no Not big deal. deal. You don't even need gloves for that. As long as you keep that area sanitized, it's no big deal. Yeah, but wear gloves when you're messing wear gloves. with the sewer hose. <laughs> when, you're, when you're setting it up, for sure. Yeah, the real dirty jobs, we're going to have to take this inside, believe yeah. it or not. Yeah, let's go. We've been living full time in our RV for over three years now, and the dirtiest jobs that we have found that we have to do on a somewhat regular basis are all in this tiny space right here. The sink, the shower, and mostly this toilet tube, which we're going to get into later because it's the grossest of all of them. But because we're in such a small space, I'm going to step out. I'm going to let Chad come in. He's going to show you how he tackles the dirty jobs in here, and I'm going to stand out there and film and, and laugh at him. Yay me. So the first thing we're going to chat about is the shower drain. The shower drain in an RV is a little bit unique because at the top level you've got the top strainer like you would have in any normal shower drain, just a little plate with holes in it. This also has like a second level which is about that far down that has a little cross member that I think might be there to kind of catch hair and things like that. We choose to use a thing called a shower shroom, which is called that because it looks like a little mushroom down here. To use that, you pull that top part off and it sits on the part below it, kind of catches hair and things. So that's the first part that needs to be clean and it gets a little bit gross under that shower shroom. Even though it's stopping the hair and stuff, there still gets buildup on those little cross things. And I usually clean this out after I use it and he uses it once mm -hmm. because you can see that's gross guys I know but that's just hair gross. all right oh, oh settle God. down it's hair <laughs> this thing gets gross but you just take a thing of toilet paper and clean it off every yeah. every time you guys use it and then it should be fine stuff still gets through here though so we generally just replace those shower shrooms because they're not very expensive. However, we don't have a clean one to show you right now, so we're just going to clean this one and clean that thing off there. Another quick note about shower drains in RVs and also sometimes your sinks and other water appliances. A lot of them have P-traps and a lot of them have things called HEPVO filters, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. It's H-E-P-V-O. What that is, it's a waterless valve, so it doesn't actually hold water and it's designed to save space. I can definitely see where that's an issue in the rear shower where there's not a lot of room between the floor of the shower and the floor of the RV and you've got to have it in a tight space. Really all the HEPVO is, is it's a rubber tube that's closed on one end and designed to open like this to only let water flow through and not let gases back up. Serves the same function as a P-trap, but it's waterless and it takes up less space. The reason I tell you this is because you don't want to use any kind of shower snake or those little drain chain thingies that you can put down the drain that catch hair that you can pull out and it's really gross but awesome at the same time. Is Stick that hanger down there. Ew, no! Well, it's either that or we cut off all your hair because that's what caused the problem. Oh my gosh! Ew! You can't use those with these types of drains because it would go through that rubber and pulling it back out would damage it. So you have to be careful what you use and know what kind of drain you have down below it. They also should not use like Drano and stuff like that, right? Right, yeah. None of that kind of stuff should go into the, the fittings and the pipes and plumbing of an RV. If Let's... you want to hand me the shroom thing, I'll get that soaking and cleaning while you're doing the other part. I'll hand you the clean side. Oh, thank you. So let's get started down here. All I do is take our little shower head. And by the way, if you're looking for a really good RV shower head. This one is awesome. The stock shower heads stink. This is the Oxygenics that we've had for three years and love it. So I have this down here just to provide a little bit of water. I'm just going to kind of let that run. And I just take a flathead screwdriver and just dig at this stuff. Turn this off now. 
it's hard to grab some of this stuff. So I just pull out what I can. What is that? The thing that gets caught in there is soap and hair. And, and it takes patience. <laughs> Like a lot of RV jobs. Can you not, you can't pull up that cross, um, no. cross piece, right? Well, you know, I think this whole thing might screw out, but that's a whole pro that's a project yeah. to do that. Some needle nose pliers can help get down in here and grab stuff. And you're gonna find that it's difficult to get big chunks, but there's a pretty big one. So these super thin needle nose are great for this. You'll know when it's time to do this to your shower because the water just doesn't drain fast enough. I mean, I guess it's pretty obvious, but even after you clean out the shower shroom and stuff and your water's still not draining very fast, that's a good sign that you need to take care of that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So this is like a steel wool SOS pad. And again, this doesn't have to be perfect. It's gonna be hidden by the shower shroom anyway. The big thing is to get the big chunks out of there that are stopping water flow. So you can see the difference from before and after where obviously it was probably about 80% obstructed before. Now it's nice and open. So now when we get the shower shroom cleaned and then there, shower will drain properly. I'll go get it. I got it pretty clean. I couldn't get some of it off unless I scrubbed a lot harder, but this will be good for now until we get new ones. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Yeah. That's, that's not bad at all. Right. So we'll just put that back in here now and that dirty job that wasn't too bad is done. Yeah, that's probably the least. Yeah, they're gonna get worse as we go along. Yeah. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> A guys. lot worse. So for this part, I gotta get down low. Luckily, oh. there's just enough room for me to sit right here. Yeah. It's gonna be hit or miss as to what kind of valve you have in your sink or your drains. For this particular one, our sinks all have P-traps in them. This one, the kitchen, and the rear bath. And I noticed one time when I was having to replace our drain in this one because we got a new sink and stuff, the P-trap gets disgusting and that can hinder the water flow and it obviously cause lots of smells. Yeah, if you're having some odors and you can't figure out where they're coming from, that's a good chance that it might be coming from there. Very, very good chance. This and was dirty job for sure. This, it was, was, gross. this was, I have a really horrible sense of smell. I think it's from breathing too much jet exhaust, but I could smell this for sure. Yeah, so just in case, <laughs> hey, we got lots of masks hey, laying around, so yeah, exactly. if he needs to cover his nose, yeah. we're good. Gonna need a little bit of light in here. This is my new favorite flashlight. Sergio, who did our independent suspension, had this, so I immediately bought three of them. <laughs> I have a flashlight addiction, but the cool thing about this is not only does it have a regular flashlight flashlight, but it's got... BAM! Oh, uh, you blinded me. <laughs> and this thing can also do red and flashing red. But this is really cool because it's got a magnetic end here. I don't have any metal in here to sit to. What about to. that uh, the toilet paper holder isn't metal? No. Okay. But I can just set this on the ground down here and provide some light in here. Okay. And for this, I'm just gonna have a bucket to catch some of the water and a towel to get all the splashing fun stuff. And this doesn't generally require any tools. It's just a hand. By the way, some of these jobs we haven't done in a timely manner because we've been waiting for a good chance to film this for you guys. Yeah. This may be really gross. Yeah, just like the upcoming toilet. Uh, we already know that's that's bad. All right. Oh. oh! Okay. You can see there's lots of very nasty nastiness. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm probably need like a couple paper towels to wipe around inside here. Thank you. Oh! <laughs> it's nasty. <laughs> and it does not smell good. Ugh. Well, another thing that we have when we do this is the fact that our gray tank gases can come up now. That's what this P-trap does is it stops sewer gases. In our case, oh, there's a nice bunch of hair. Mm. 
it's gray water, but you know, this is your bathroom sink, so you brush your teeth, so you got all the toothpaste and the toothpaste. soaps and the hairs yeah. and whatever else might go down the sink. Wait, let's show them how pretty it is in there. Well, the really nasty stuff we'll fell into the bucket here. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, barf. <laughs> it looks like barf. It does. It? it looks like barf. <laughs> so we're not going to dump this outside or anything like that. We're just going to dump it in the toilet. Since we have to clean the toilet next anyhow, <laughs> you get to do it. <laughs> yeah. make some of this up as we go guys if you can't tell <laughs> totally making this up as we go i mean i've done this before but every time it's like oh what did i do last time oh that's right i shoved toilet paper through there i gotta say though that the, that pee trap isn't nearly as bad as it was the last time we did it the first time we did this it was probably after like two years you excited to do that next can't wait again it doesn't have to be perfect i got most of the like jelly Gel, mm. gel stuff. Let's just, let's just say it was just toothpaste. Yeah. That's all we it got was. Out all the used toothpaste. Yeah. With any of these plastic fittings like this, if it's taking too much effort to turn them, you're probably cross starting it. So be careful of that. Should go on fairly easily. All right, leak check. Leak check fail. Leak check fail? <laughs> Leak check fail. Oh no. Okay, I just gotta get this a little tighter, I think. <laughs> Leak check fail. <laughs> Is that bowl still handy? Speaking of cross turning, I think I kind of didn't have it on straight the first time, which is why it didn't tighten down as many turns. Leak check part two. Good. Lick check, good. Sweet. Now we're moving on to your favorite. Okay. Yeah. Kay. All right, guys. This is probably the most disgusting task, job, RV job, dirty job, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> that there is that we have found so far. We had no clue this was even a thing. Nobody ever told us about this one. <laughs> and now if you think about it, you're like, oh yeah, that makes sense. If you full-time or you RV for like you know, several months at a time, you've probably come across this. And it's the buildup on the toilet tube. I don't know what else to call it, but the tube that yeah. drains into your black tank straight from your toilet bowl. Yeah, much like a lot of the things here, there's no P-trap here either. Your household toilet has a P-trap built into the ceramic piece that's part of it. The P-trap is up inside there. When the water goes up and over, out of the way, and you can't see the stuff anymore, mm -hmm. That's the last you have to think about it. Mm -hmm. Not, Not so. Here. As stuff flushes down over time, Bouncing stuff starts sides, sticking yeah. to the tube and then it starts to accumulate and create build up. Yeah. For lack and it's not it's not like direct fecal material. Well, of course it's like, it is. It is, but it's like a, it's, it's almost like a jelly. It's it's very like a gel. It's like jellyfish. Sir, jelly donuts, sir! A jelly donut? Are you allowed to eat jelly donuts, Private Pile? Sir, no, sir! <laughs> okay, so it's dis it's disgusting, and we had no idea. When we first started noticing it, we were like, what the heck, and what are we supposed to do? And we tried different things, and mm -hmm. the hot water pouring on air, that didn't really work. He has built several different contraptions, and I think he finally got the thing. This is version 3.0. Do you guys, you guys know he <laughs> likes to be MacGyver and like MacGyver things up. And you just can't reach it with a normal toilet brush. Even with gloves on and trying to get that in there, I've tried that. So I wanted something that was extendable that I could collapse and put into our waste hose container down there. And I looked forever for a brush head like this with a screw adapter. By the way, this is all sanitized. This is all brand new. It hasn't been used yet, so that's why I'm just touching it. So I decided to build my own, and I bought a brush and dremeled out the hole here and put it in, and then I glued it and screwed it in. What kind of pole is this? All-purpose extension yeah. Yeah. pole. So Three foot, 0 0.9 meter pole. Okay. This is plenty of length to do what you're about to see. So we'll put links for all this stuff. 
in the description. Mm -hmm. I am going to use gloves for this particular part just in case I have to knock stuff off the brush. Because <laughs> <laughs> hey, and this is the part where we should warn you the the <laughs> the things you're about to see are graphic in nature. If you have a sensitive stomach, you might want to turn the channel or fast forward. Like me. <laughs> or just get out of here. When we filmed our flush your black tank into a toilet when we're mooch docking video. Link below. People were either saying thank you for putting the poo emoji over the actual toilet stuff. And some people were like, what the heck? We're grown ups, we can see that stuff. So, I don't know. I would like to show you guys just because it's part of what it is. So if you're offended by gross stuff, I'm sorry. If you're offended, maybe should we give them a countdown? Like three, two, one, close your eyes. Three, two, one. Oh, gross. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's really gross. I mean, when you put a spotlight on it like that. <laughs> so that smells. You can clearly see why it would cause odors. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, the odor, the odor you get when you're flushing your toilet a lot of it can be due to that. When you flush your toilet and it smells and you go through the process and you dump your tanks and you flush them and it still smells, that's probably why. So I have a grocery bag standing by. So after I'm done scrubbing this, I'll get all the big chunks off of here before I put it away into the dirty bits bin. Also, I have installed a valve on this for when I want to grease the seal. And we'll show you that at the end because that's important after doing this because we're going to scrape a lot of that off. All right. Here we go. Here we go. So you can see the kind of stuff that comes off of there. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's just a matter of starting at the top, working your way down. So one thing to note is your main valve, you know, it's kind of like a little, a little bit of a convex like valve that closes and opens like this. And as it opens this part here, you can kind of see the front edge of, and all up under there, you want to get under there too. Stuff gets you, uh, you know, stuck in there. Yeah. So you want to start at that end and, and scrub all around there and let that stuff fall and then work your way yeah. from the top down. Stuff. Stuff. Oh, it's so much better. And you get way down in there. We really did wait way too long to clean it because we were waiting on the right time to film this video. Filming stuff takes a lot of setup. Mm -hmm. it may not seem like it, but yeah. Oh yeah, I can see the how clean the wall is. Oh yeah. It's good. I forgot. Usually, I have my headlamp for this job. So oh yeah, just, that would make sense. Yeah. Squeaky clean. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure exactly how the tube is attached to the bottom where the floor is or how it's attached to the tank, but I try when I go down to the, into the part that's obviously between the floor and the tank, because you can kind of tell, you know, how, what part of this is toilet and what part is going into the plumbing. I try not to shove on it too hard because I don't want to disconnect it. That would not oh. be a fun thing to repair. Talk so about I, a dirty I, job. I, I, I take it easy. I'm not jamming down too hard on yeah. it. I am trying to get some lateral forces on this to scrub, but I'm not jamming too hard. I think I'm done. Look at that. Clean. That's so nice. It's like fresh and clean, brand new. You ready for the bag? I'm ready for the bag. Bag me. <laughs> I think we've talked about this particular job and product before, but let's just show them again real quick. Yeah, this is something that I do every time that I dump the black tank. It's also something that I do every time I see that the toilet is not holding water. This seal down here, that little flapper plastic piece I talked about, goes up against a rubber seal. And it's not a perfect seal, so you want to use a little bit of plumber's grease. Any plumber's grease will do. You put it on the black rubber ring there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is also why I installed a shutoff valve for this toilet because it's difficult to put this grease on when water's running. Right. And you don't want to have to run outside to just turn it off. And... Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. such a long way to go. Yeah. Quarter turn. Now the water's off. And all I do is get a glove, obviously. This is a new glove, by the way. <laughs> get it on your finger. Get a good gunk of it. And then you're going to 
hold down the valve open and then just rub it alongside the bottom of the rubber part. And you know, get it on there good and liberally. Um, as you open and close the valve a couple of times, it'll smear around and create a good seal. It's much more pleasant to do it after you clean the valve oh, yes. too. And that's it. I'm gonna turn the water back on. Give it a couple flushes. Let it kind of spread around there. And that's it for this toilet. Yes. And you do want to keep water in there because that seal is designed to stay wet. Mm -hmm. And if it drains and then stays dry for too long, that seal can be ruined and you'll have to replace it. And they want to make sure they use the plumber's grease and not like some petroleum base or something, right? Absolutely. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed yeah, no, but definitely don't use Vaseline. Nothing with petroleum based in it because um, that will just dry it out. Yeah, dry out to rubber and it's do the exact opposite of what you want it to do. We have a couple more just little bonus tips that we're going to show you and we're going to start in the bedroom in our washing machine closet. This next one, like we said, is just a bonus tip. It's not like gag me. It's not the easiest job, but um, I'm going to move these out of the way just so you can see. Hooks everywhere we can put them. So with the washing machine, every couple months I try to do this, but again, we've waited a little too long buildup occurs and mildew occurs. It's the worst in this rubber piece here, but it also happens up in here. So you can see all the buildup and stuff in here. That's not too difficult. These pieces come out, but then do we need the flashlight? Yeah. Well, yeah, there we go. So you can see that it gets slimy, mildewy. And mold, then, mold and mildew. Yeah, and that's disgusting. Yeah. So this is a dirtier job than it usually is because I try to prevent that. See all that? That's disgusting. So we're going to clean that. I haven't had complete success with getting the mildew and mold stains off completely, but I do get them to the point where you can no longer feel them. They're no longer slimy and I think it's just a stain. We're going to try vinegar and water. We also have a um, mildew cleaner here and we also have a magic eraser because that might work. The problem is it's such a tight space here between this door and this door. We got a garbage. What's he doing? Oh, is he, is he smashing it down? No, he's smashing it down. <laughs> it's like the old foot in the garbage to make more room for more garbage. But, thing, it's a, but he's using a front loader. Yeah. You were saying that we could replace the whole rubber piece there if we need to, right? Yeah, I need to look up and find the part number, but. From the research that I did, it seems like this is kind of a common issue with front load washers in general, just because there's a door and a ceiling. When you close it, there's no air in there and mold can form fairly easily. When I'm done with using the washing machine, I do try to leave this open and air it out. I don't always, but I try to remember to do that. Sometimes if the dryer's going and it's noisy, I like to have the door shut just to prevent the noise. This door here. Mm -hmm. That yeah. in turn shuts it like that so you don't get as much air inside. Yeah. So So we could probably do a better job at making sure that stays open all the time so yeah. it can air out. I could also try to wipe it out when I'm done. These are just things I'm going to have to remember to do because it's not like second nature for me to do that. If you know a solution for this, please reach out below in the comments or on our blog or about wherever. About any of these things that we're yeah. talking about. Because if you've these, got tips, we always love to hear them. These are just the ways that we've come up with and we wanted to share them with you, but surely somebody's probably got even better tips. But Maybe even these, somebody not named Shirley. I knew you were gonna do that. <laughs> Can you fly this plane and land it? Shirley, you can't be serious. I am serious and don't call me Shirley. These things just pop out. I say just like it's easy, but now I can't get it to come out. Okay. That got pretty bad. That's pretty gross. Can you see? Oh, yeah. You just put those in the kitchen sink and soak them? Yeah. yeah. Use that blue bowl. Thanks, man. Thanks for, thanks for, this, for that thanks feedback. For, thanks for the tips. Yeah, it's good. All right, I'm just going to let that soak while we clean the other crap. This is vinegar and water mix. I'm just gonna let it soak on there, I guess. I don't know. Oh gosh, that's disgusting. See, like when you try to scrub this piece off though. It just it, doesn't do anything. It does a little, but not like you would expect it to. It just doesn't, it's just stain. Let's try the magic eraser and see what happens. Okay, 
so that doesn't really do much on the rubber. It's all up in each crevice, but mainly under this. Oh! Sometimes the clothes don't come out as fresh as I would like for them to, and this might be why. You've done more of, a, of this than I have, but I've tried mm -hmm. cleaning this. It, it just does not ever look clean. You can get the slimy, slimy bits out of it. We've had this for three years. It might be a good idea to just replace the, the seal. The yeah. seal. I mean, I'm scrubbing. It's not as bad as dealing with poop. That's for sure. I'm finding that the magic eraser works pretty well at cleaning these compartments for the detergent and the softener, which is also what gets mucked up. Look, Blech. it's gross. I've tried scrubbing with a brush. I've tried all kinds of things. You can see now nothing's really coming up anymore. I think it's just stained. I guess now I just got to go clean the reservoirs that the stuff goes into. So we just realized that this whole tray pops right off. That makes it a lot easier how to get in the back nooks and crannies here. So that's what I'm going to do. We'll probably order another one. I'll it has been right three right. years, so yeah. it's okay. We can we can get another one. But I feel better. I feel like it's at least cleaned off, maybe stained still. That <laughs> actually took longer than the other stuff that you did. Yeah. We're gonna show you two more really quick tips, and then we're out. Let's go to the kitchen. Kitchen. I saw this little tip on one of the Grand Design Owners forums. Somebody was asking how people clean the stainless steel sink. I usually use steel wool, but somebody said use a magic eraser. And since we have a little bit of a magic eraser left from the dirt jobs that we just did, I wanted to go ahead and show you. I tried it earlier and I think that the bleach that I just put in here kind of already cleaned this a little bit, but check it out. It actually does clean and I don't have to get out the steel wool. I did notice a big difference when I tried it to test it out. And then I can actually polish this thing up too. This thing's probably pretty gross. We replace this about every three months also. It's easy to clean out. That's pretty just, grossy. Uh, just to put a new one in there. They come in, I think, two packs or something. Pretty cheap. We have them in our Amazon store, but you can see that it really cleans that off. <laughs> if you don't have steel wool, this works. This might even be maybe a little bit better if it's, it's less abrasive. I don't know. That's just cool. Something that I learned on one of the forums. The last thing I wanted to share with you now that everything's just a mess in here, is I love having all these cabinets and they're nice hard wood. They're hard to keep clean. They're hard to look nice. When I use different products on them, they never quite look good. They kind of have some rough pieces that can look still dusty even when they're clean. And again, on one of the owner's forums, somebody said to use this. And I'll tell you what, it is awesome on our cabinets. This stuff is like, you gotta be careful because it will stain, but can you see okay? I don't think that these are in really bad shape right now, but what I love about it is it gets rid of any dryness. So these beveled edges or routered edges here are a little rough and they hold dust. Yeah, you and can hear stuff, it, see? That stuff gets right in there. Yeah, and it just makes them look so much better. It helps clean them, it helps polish them up, and it just makes everything look better. I think what you're supposed to do is rub it on and then buff it off with a clean, dry towel, and that's it. This was just a bonus tip. You can get dirty, it can be a dirty job, it can stain your hands if you don't wear gloves and stuff and you're doing a lot at the same time. The chores are all done. Yes. Those dirty jobs. Time for a beer. <laughs> if you guys have any other ideas on some of the jobs that we showed you, if you have better ways to do them, let us know. Or any other jobs that you find, dirty jobs that you have to do on a regular basis, put them in the comments and mm -hmm. let, we want to hear about them. Yep. If you want to see some of our old content, our website is a great place to see that. And that's it. Plumber's grease, I'm not sure what it's made out of. I think it's actual ground up plumbers. No. <laughs> I don't know what I don't that know. That was a bad dad joke. That was, <laughs> that was a really bad dad joke. That was a bad dad joke. Oh. <laughs> God. Now, Jared, do you want to put the mask on? Oh, I don't think it's gonna help. So oh. um, tight spaces. Comfy? Oh yeah, super comfy. Stain stainless steel or steel wool. I mean, if you don't have stain wait, what's it called? Stainless steel wool? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh.
It's a tight space. Yeah. Okay. Action. <laughs> I love poop. <laughs>